Coffee Break German, Season 3, Episode 23. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir, Andrea? Mir geht es sehr gut. Danke, Marc. Und dir? Heute bin ich ein bisschen müde. Hast du nicht gut geschlafen? Aber ich bin gerade aus Amerika zurückgekommen. Also ich bin sehr müde. Ich verstehe. Wir haben ein sehr gutes deutsches Wort dafür. Okay. Und es ist Jetlag. Oh, ja, ich weiß nicht, ob du von gehört hast. <lacht> ja, also Jetlag haben? Ja. Okay, ja. also ich habe, ich habe Jetlag, ja. Ja, sehr gut. So what are we doing in this episode? And hopefully my Jetlag will not affect too badly. Heute sprechen wir über Ordinalzahlen. Ordinal, ordinal numbers? numbers. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so ordinal numbers are when we uh, when we count things in the sense of first, second, third and fourth. Yes, that's right. Well, let's get started then. Uh, bist du bereit? Ich bin bereit. Also, los geht's. Ja, also heute geht es um Ordinalzahlen. Uh, many of you might think, oh, but this is very beginner stuff. We've done this before. And it's true. But today we're going to add some new dimensions to this topic. We're going to look at uh, how the declination works and how we can use them as adjectives or nouns. So there will be some new things to learn today. Some additional complications, no doubt. <laughs> No, I don't think it's too complicated. I think we'll be fine. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's then take a look at the ordinal numbers. Yes, so as you said, it's when we count things first, second, etc., etc. And uh, let's look at this um, in German just as some review. So how would we say the first? Mm, well, it depends on what we're talking about. Uh, der Erste? Yeah. Exactly. So if it's a uh, masculine, yeah, a singular, then it would be der Erste, yeah. And that could be a noun. Ich bin der Erste. So I am the first. Yeah. Or it could be an adjective. Um, das ist der Erste Dezember. Okay, so the first of December, yeah. Genau. And then we have, uh, if it was die, what would we say? It would also be die Erste. Yes, that's right. So die Erste, yeah. And what about das? Uh, das Erste? Yes, exactly. So that's very straightforward. And then we have plural, that would be... Die Ersten. That's correct, yeah. Die Ersten, yeah. And then let's just quickly go through some of these because there are some tricky ones, yeah. So the second would be... Zweite. Zweite, yeah. And third... Uh, dritte. Genau. And then it gets a bit easier because it's a bit more, um, there's a, a pattern. Yes, yeah, so vierte. Mm -hmm. And fifth. Fünfte. Yes, and then the sixth. Uh, sechste. Yes, and the seventh is a bit tricky. Uh, siebte. Yes, not siebente. Yes, siebte. And then it goes back to our pattern. Uh, achte, mm -hmm. neunte, and zehnte. Yes, that's correct. And then if we go into the double digits, yeah, we have elfte, zwölfte, dreizehnte, vierzehnte, fünfzehnte. And then tricky one, sechzehnte. Sechzehnte. Siebzehnte. Siebzehnte, okay. And then it goes back to our pattern. So the 18th would be... 18. Mm -hmm. And the 19th. 19. Mm -hmm. And then the 20th, because now we're adding something to our pattern. So that would be, um, well, 20 is 20. But I think we need to add an S in there. 20. Genau, so der 20. And then it goes on, 21., 22., and so on and so forth. And then the 30th is also a bit tricky. 
Um, do we do the same and add in another S? So we go from 30 to 30. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the 40th. 40. Mm -hmm. 50th. 50. Well, that's tricky. 50. Yes. And 60th. Uh, so we are looking there at Zechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechzechz
So like the 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 fourth of the sixth would be the the fourth of June. Ja, genau, das ist richtig. Ja. Okay. Also der erste erste ist der erste Januar. Aha. Ja. Und dann der Februar ist der zweite, März der dritte, and so on and so forth. Okay. And uh, this is, you need to be a bit on the ball, because for us this is completely normal and we just go, ja, ja, also am 5. 6. Babi, Babi, ba. <laughs> yeah, and then you need to think a bit if this is not something you do in your own language. Yeah, and I think the added complication here, especially for our listeners in the States, uh, would be that the, the numbers are turned around. So you said there, uh, the 5th of the 6th, I think... Ja. Der fünfte, sechste. Fünfte, sechste. Sechste, okay. Um, so the fifth of the sixth would of course be the fifth of June, but an, an American would be used to seeing that as six slash five slash the year. Yes, yes. An added complication there. <laughs> It's a, yes. So we say the day first and then the month next. Yeah. And uh, so I have here a little test for you, Mark. Der fünfte dritte ist mein Geburtstag. That's not true, by the way. Okay. okay. So, aber I take gifts anyway. So, der fünfte dritte ist mein Geburtstag. That would be the fifth of the third. So, the fifth of March is my birthday. Mm -hmm. Genau, super. And um, welches Datum ist heute? What date is today? I've just made today? one up. Yeah, so I've just made one up. Okay. Uh -huh. Der 22.12. Okay, so that would be the, the 22nd of the 12th, the 22nd of December. Yeah, genau. Sehr gut. Bravo. So when we write out a date like this, and that is doesn't happen very often, but you would see it maybe on official documents, you know, that... Um, you know, where either the government is involved or, or a lawyer is involved. And there you would write it out, for example, when you were born or something that happened on a day you bought a house or whatever. And that's when we write out these dates. Mm -hmm. And what is important is that the day is uh, spelled with only lowercase letters, whereas the month starts with a capital letter. So you earlier said der fünfte dritte, so that would be fünfte all lowercase and then dritte with a capital D. That's correct. Okay. Do you ever use uh, uh, the, the, the figure, the number, in when you're writing this out, like saying der five, the number five, to? Yeah. Um, most of the times, as I said, we only write it in words if it's a very official document. Okay. But normally we just uh, write it in numbers. And what we do then is a dot behind the numbers. So if we look at my fake birthday again, so der fünfte dritte, then we would write five dot and three dot. Right. So the fifth of the third. And very complicated again for our American listeners who would be thinking of that as uh, three slash five which would mean still March the 5th. <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, but um, I think this is all straightforward, no? Yeah, it seems to be. seems to be. Mm -hmm. Let's move on now to the next uh, part. It is maybe a bit more complicated, but nothing we haven't really seen before. These numbers are also subject to declination. So the cases come into play here. Okay. And uh, I have some uh, examples for you where we can see this. Mein erstes Schokoladeeis habe ich mit drei Jahren gegessen. So, my first chocolate ice cream, uh, or I ate my first chocolate ice cream when I was three years old. Genau, das ist richtig. And here we have mein erstes Schokolade eis, because my erste Schokolade eis is here an object mm -hmm. and it is in the. It's in the accusative. Yes. Okay. Sehr gut. Super. And that's why we have accusative endings that we looked at 
in a previous episodes when we looked at adjectives. Adjectives, yes. So they work the same as adjectives when we're, That's we're using exactly them. That's exactly right. Okay. Yes. So mine estes chocolate ice. Um, so just to be 100% clear here, this is which gender? Neuter. Yeah. So if it's neuter, then we're using the neuter uh, accusative form. But of course, estes would also be estes in the nominative that is correct. Right. I was just wanting to make sure I had that right in my head there. No, no, absolutely. It just looks exactly the same. So I could do the same example with a masculine singular noun. Um, my favorite one here is always apple. Okay. Yeah. So we have, Meinen ersten Apfel habe ich mit drei Jahren gegessen. So you said there, Meinen ersten Apfel. So we're making meinen, obviously, um, our accusative of the the masculine there. Meinen and ersten, again, an accusative ending there uh, for the word for first. So meinen ersten Apfel habe ich mit drei Jahren gegessen. Genau, sehr gut, super. I have another example where this is very visible again, and we're using a masculine singular word. You ready? Yeah. Tanja hat schon zwei Hüte verloren. Jetzt muss sie sich einen dritten Hut kaufen. Oh dear. So, Tanja has already lost two hats. Um, and now she has to buy a third one, yeah? Genau, richtig. So, Tanja hat schon zwei Hüte verloren. And then you said, jetzt muss sie sich einen dritten Hüte uh, hut uh, kaufen. So now she must buy a third hat. So einen dritten, again, uh, using the masculine uh, accusative form. Genau, das ist richtig. Sehr gut. So these are working like adjectives. And would I be right in thinking then that that means we also have endings for the dative and the genitive and so on? Das ist richtig, ja. Yeah? So it's the same endings that we've used for adjectives. Yeah. I'm thinking about, for example, if would we say something like am 3. Januar? That is correct. So when we say a date, um, very often we use it in the dative. The, the examples I've given, I had to work really hard for. <laughs> To find examples where we can use them in the nominative. But normally when we speak about dates, we say something happens or has already happened on a certain date. And it would be am. Um. Yeah, so andem. Yeah, yeah, genau. So, so that's our dative. And because we're using andem, ersten, then that's the definite form as opposed to the indefinite article form. That is correct. So am ersten... Janu am, oder am ersten ersten beginnt das neue Jahr. Right, so the first of the first, yeah, on the first of the first. Genau. Uh, and we also use sometimes dates with a genitive, uh -huh. which I'm sure you will find delightful. Um, and we would say, uh, der Morgen des ersten ersten. So the morning of the first of the first. Yeah, and then something happens. Right. I've got a question for you, Andrea. You said on the first of the first, am ersten ersten. So that first ersten in there, totally understand that that is dative. But the second ersten is that genitive because we're actually saying of the first. That's a very good question, Mark. And I'm really glad I found an explanation for you. And uh, they're both in the dative because the first, the, so the day first, acts as an adjective. So we don't, it's just a translation that obviously makes sense in English that we say the first of the first. But in German, we say the first first, like the green first or the beautiful first. So it's, they're both in the dative. Right. Okay. I give you an example where it's very obvious, okay? So I speak of the first apple because I love apples, yeah? So, um, auf dem ersten Apfel ist ein Fleck. So, on the first apple, 
there is a there is a like a smudge a thing, smudge. Huh? Okay, uh, like a mark. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so auf dem ersten Apfel. And if the apple were in the genitive, it would say apples. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah? I see. Th this is hard going at the best of times, but with, with jet lag, I have to say that this is <laughs> even more difficult this morning. But I gave you a beautiful example, okay? Of so course. Auf dem ersten Apfel ist ein Fleck, and we can see that it's not in the genitive because otherwise Apfel would have an S ending. Okay, now obviously there are different endings for each of the cases and each of the genders, but it would make for very boring audio for us to go through all of these just now. And the fact is they work the same way as adjectives. So hopefully our listeners can go back and, and work through that table uh, from, from previous episodes. Ja, genau. Super, Mark. Okay, so coming up after the break, we'll be listening to a conversation which perhaps may feature one or two uh, ordinal numbers. That's in just a moment. <laughs> In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for season three there. Okay, so we're going to listen to a conversation now. Andrea, can you tell us a little about this conversation? It's a conversation between two friends, Anna and Stephanie, or short Steffi, who want to go on holidays and they look at flight options and hotel options. Okay, let's have a listen and listen out for these ordinal numbers. Hallo Anna, wie geht es dir? Hallo Steffi, danke gut. Ich schaue mir gerade im Internet an, wohin wir in den Urlaub fliegen könnten. Die erste Destination, die da steht, ist Atlanta. Aber das ist mir etwas zu weit weg, ehrlich gesagt. Ja, mir auch. Was gibt es denn sonst noch so? Ich will unbedingt direkt fliegen. Das Einfachste wäre natürlich Berlin. Aber dann wäre ich schon das vierte Mal dort. Und ich will mal etwas Neues sehen. Ja, ich mag auch nicht in Deutschland bleiben. Ist schließlich die letzte Reise, bevor ich mein zweites Studium beginne. Danach habe ich dann wieder drei Jahre kein Geld. Ja, eben. Also ich denke, dass die einfachste Lösung ein Urlaub in Italien ist. Hier steht, dass man innerhalb von 90 Minuten in Rom ist. Da war ich noch nie und die haben das beste Eis. Ja, und im April ist auch nicht die heißeste Jahreszeit für Rom, aber trotzdem schon warm. Steht da, an welchen Daten ein Flug geht? Also, der Direktflug geht nur montags, mittwochs und freitags. Das wäre der dritte Vierte, der fünfte Vierte oder der siebte Vierte. Und dann eine Woche später jeweils zurück. Das hört sich gut an. Ich würde gern am Freitag fliegen. Dann ist gleich Wochenendstimmung. Ja, das würde mir auch gefallen. Also, ich weiß, ich frage dich zum hundertsten Mal, aber... Schaffst du es, um 6 Uhr in der Früh am Flughafen zu sein? Der Flug geht nämlich schon um 7.30 Uhr und der späteste Check-in-Termin ist 6.30 Uhr. Ja, kein Problem. Ich nehme einfach den Flughafenbus. Der erste geht um 5 Uhr morgens. Ja, das ist sicher das Beste. Ich nehme ein Taxi. Sind ja nur 10 Minuten von mir. Super. Wie viel kostet denn der Flug? Der ist nicht der billigste. Hin und zurück 250 Euro. Okay, das geht schon. Und dann müssen wir noch ein Hotel buchen. Also das Schönste, das ich gesehen habe, ist gleich bei der Piazza Navona. Ich schicke dir mal den Link. Es ist das siebte auf der Liste. Ah ja, habe den Link bekommen. 
Wow, sieht gut aus. Aber das dritte ist auch nicht schlecht. Etwas billiger, dafür weniger zentral. Ja, das hat mir auch gefallen. Also wir müssen ja noch nicht heute entscheiden, sondern können uns noch etwas informieren. Welches Datum ist heute? Der 16. Okay, ich denke, wenn wir uns bis am 23. entschieden haben, dann reicht das. Ja, das denke ich auch. Super. Jetzt aber mal eine ganz andere Frage. Was war da gestern mit... Okay, hopefully they've found uh, some uh, some good options. Yes, I think so. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> okay, so let's have a little discussion about this. Tell us what happened in this conversation. We will go through it in detail in our bonus episode, of course. Yes, we have uh, Anna and Steffi, and they talk about their holiday plans this year on the phone, and they're looking up flight options on the internet. One of their criteria is that it is one direct flight, so they don't have to change. And the first place on the list on the internet is Atlanta. Yeah, but it's too far away. Um, so it doesn't seem to be the perfect, the perfect option. That's true. And then another option would have been Berlin, but uh, they don't want to go there because that's too close. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit like Goldilocks, I think, here. <laughs> yes, yes. And also Anna has already been to Berlin three times and doesn't wo want to go back a fourth time. And Stephanie wants to go abroad because it will be the last trip before she starts another course at uni. And what are her problems then? Well, when she starts uni, she'll not have any money to travel different places. Exactly. So they decide on Italy as a good destination, mm -hmm. and in particular Rome, um, and they want to go in April. Yep. And the good thing about going to Rome in April is... Oh, it's not too hot. It's, it's not too hot, not too cold. It's just nice. That's right, yeah. And they found three flights per week, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Friday. And do you remember which one they decide to take? I think they go for the one on Friday. Um, it's that, That's the one that they choose. It's, is it 250 euros that it cost? Yeah, um, that's correct. They don't think this is very cheap, but okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the flight is early in the morning. And uh, Anna is a bit concerned because she wonders if Steffi manages to be at the airport on time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I don't know what history they yeah, have. Yeah, there must be so, there must be a story there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and Stephanie says that um, she'll be taking the airport bus, and the first one leaves at 5 a.m. Yeah, Anna's going to be taking a taxi though. She only lives 10 minutes from the airport. She's she's a little luckier, I think. Mm -hmm. They still have to find a hotel, and they're looking at two on the list that they find particularly appealing, but they struggle to make a decision now. And do you know to when they postpone their decision? Yeah, I think very specifically until the 23rd of the month. That's correct, yes. And then Stephanie changes the subject and the call ends. Okay. So, as I said, we'll be going through this in detail in our bonus episode. But for now, we've got time for just one more thing. So, wir haben noch eine Kleinigkeit and it is a Redewendung. Ah, so an expression. Exactly, and it's das fünfte Rad am Wagen sein. Das fünfte Rad am Wagen sein. So, the fifth wheel on the, on the wagon. Yes. So, is this like, well, I'm thinking, is this like being a spare wheel? Uh, being a gooseberry, yes. being one person too many. Yeah, or as the Italians say, holding the candle. Holding the candle, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, it's exactly this, to not belong because, you know, three's a crowd. Three's a crowd, yeah. yeah. Okay, but your <laughs> fifth, the fifth wheel on the wagon, fantastic. Genau. Okay, well, we will leave it there. 
for this episode. We hope that you've enjoyed learning about ordinal numbers. And of course, there's more practice in our bonus episode. If you're not already subscribed to that, then you can find it at coffeebreakgerman.com. Vielen Dank und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>